So what's up? We're going to be taking a look at some stormtroopers now. Obviously, the camera's going to move here in a second. I don't expect a whole ton of people to be watching, but truth be told, I had to paint these anyway, so I just wanted to really get uh, it here if anybody wants to watch it later. Just uh, trying to assist them out here with a little bit of live stream. So if you're watching, thanks for watching. If not, catch it later. Let's get this thing in place first. Or there is that one person I'm about to make sick. I really apologize. Really, really apologize for this. Um, yeah, so we're going to just dive right in here to the Stormtroopers. So one thing to note, they're already primed. Uh, if you want to prime yours with a just a white spray paint, you can. That's kind of the main thing is to prime them with... Uh, I just use the, I use the stuff from Walmart, actually. I know it's kind of crazy to use Walmart spray paint for that, but it's just the... Uh, what's the brand? Rust-Oleum. It's just a Rust-Oleum white spray primer so i use it and it uh it works pretty well just to get them covered i mean it's you know a lot of times they're going to tell you you need to buy citadel brand but that stuff is insanely expensive so for three four bucks you can get this and it's really not that bad it does a good job it does coverage and that's really the most important part is having all that coverage so um here's what i have here that we're going to need you're going to need some white scar which that will come later you're gonna need some non oil, that's key. That's really the main thing that makes everything happen. It's basically magic. And then you're gonna need some Abaddon Black, as well as maybe either some Lead Belcher or Mechanicus Standard Gray. Um, this is gonna be our guns portion. Uh, that's gonna cover all our guns, or our gear, and our backpacks, or all such as that. You can tweak them however you want. It's just what I'm doing for this paint tonight. So um, yeah, super unprofessional. I have just a tub of these instead of on a nice little paint rag, but hey, it's way cheaper, and that's kind of the key. So I'm going to be kind of showing you these as we get a little closer. I'm scoot that out of the way some, so you can see. Basically, I've got the core set's worth of Stormtroopers. There are 14 total. So, uh, you know, it's 14. It's a lot to paint, but if you kind of get into a rhythm, it goes pretty quickly. Um, it's, not, it's not too terribly bad. Also, you have uh, your brushes of different sizes. It's not really as important with this unless you find just a brush that feels comfortable for you. So first and foremost, we're going to take a good equal mixture of the Abaddon Black and the Mechanicus Standard Gray. Or like I said, if you want that more metallic finish, you can do Lead Belcher in there. But we're going to do about 50-50 of these. Thanks to Sarastro for originally helping me learn all this stuff about painting for his videos on Imperial Assault. But just kind of a nice 50-50 mixture here. Uh, this will be for the guns, the headband. It's not really the headband, but it's for the visor that goes around that black thin line, as well as the fingers and things like that. So uh, that's kind of key. Oh, I do not have a paper towel up here. I'll be right back. This is what we call low tech painting. Basically, we're just getting everything painted so that it looks good on the table. But it looks more than good with even what you have here. Even this crazy looking amalgam of things I have here, it actually looks really fantastic when it's on the table. So you know, I shake your paints up, get a good um, color out of them. This Mechanicus is almost empty because I use it a whole ton. This color is very, it's useful to just have a good dark gray. And since I use that Mechanicus standard gray for that, it's almost empty. So what I'm gonna do is just to lighten it up some, Put just a touch of that lead belcher in there to get that good gray color that we're after. But also give it a shine of metallic for the gun so it has a little bit of shine on there. Uh, that won't really bother us for the visor, but it will pop just enough on the guns. And these are going to get a spray anyway at the end, so it's not like it's going to be super bright from that. Uh, metal. So what we're going to do is you take just a thin brush. Um, all the numbers are different. If I was to tell you, you know, this number, well then a different brand would have a different size number. So you're going to take just a small little dab right there and wipe it off if you want. Always forgot to water down my paint. Always water down your paint. You know, a couple drops of water in there. If you're worried about it drying, you can do a glazing medium just to keep it wet. But it shouldn't dry because we're going to go pretty quick on what we have here. So, let's launch straight into this. You're gonna take this, just get a little touch here, get it thin and nice and tight on your brush. 
You're going to take it, first of all, just wipe it on this visor. And the beautiful part is, even if it gets a little bit messy, which it won't, you just hold still and be really careful. Get a lot of points of contact, that's the main thing. Uh, forearms on the table. I always like to put my pinky on the figure as well in this sort of position. That way you see a lot of points of contact to control so it's not moving around a whole ton. Uh, then just make that line by moving your finger around in a good circle there. Then you can pick up a little bit more paint if you want. Go ahead and do the fingers. I'm going to wait and do the guns last on everybody just because sometimes this paint gets a little bit onto the brush, kind of splayed out, and it gets harder to get your... Uh, your brush as tight as you want it a little bit later into the paint when you're doing this many figures of the same kind. Then you kind of go around the figure and just find all these little crevices that are a little bit big for shade to get down into. You can just put like a little bit of right down in there in the elbows, maybe in here in the thighs and things like that, the inner thighs. But some of that, the wash is going to do most of that anyway. And then you rinse and repeat. We're going to do that 14 different times here. Just along again, lots of points of contact here. Um, one thing I forgot to mention on that last Stormtrooper, because I'm so used to painting Rebellion, which is much smaller, we're going to need the eyes as well. So you put just a little bit of paint on the brush. Again, lots of points of contact. Watch what you're doing carefully. And just get in there and get the eyes painted as well. Could you use the wash for that? You probably could. I've just never done it because I've always felt it was better to go ahead and have that paint of the eyes done. So once you get the visors done, do the eyes as well, and then go around and get the rest of the body, get the fingers, all that sort of stuff. When we finish at the end, we're going to come back and do the guns. I want everybody together. Some of them are a little bigger in Legion because they have backpacks and all that sort of stuff. But uh, just know that that is something you don't need to forget. Don't forget the eyes because it really makes these things pop, and it makes them really unforgettable, uh, much like they look in the movies. Very much that stormtrooper feel of hopelessness as they enter your ship and then you realize they're out here she's garbage and well, you're good to go um so anybody watch solo if you're watching if you do watch and you want to comment let me know if you watched solo if you saw solo or anything of that sort i don't even know how i see the comments here how do i even see um how the comments are going i don't are they somebody's gonna have to help me with that i don't even see how to view the comments if they are viewable but uh or the chat or whatever it is the live chat should i zoom in and see if that'll do it no i did not do it there we go give me just a second sorry get this rolling man it may just be because i'm the only one here watching it and that's fine like i said if you're watching this later you can watch it just as a tutorial but i'm just trying to see if that's the case if there's anything i need to hit for the chat to so pause here for just a second. Let me make sure I'm doing this. Everything I need to do for this before I get back into it. Let's see. Top chat, chat, do not just live chat. Okay, so just turn on the live chat. Let's see if that fixes it. Live chat, all messages are visible. Done, there we go. Let me reload it on my iPad here. Just so I can see it. I'm using the iPad just to kind of mirror things. That's why you see it off to the side there. Let me go back in, close this out as a viewer, and come back in and watch it. All right. Chat. Where would you chat at? Huh. It's so weird. I don't see anywhere you do the chat. Huh. That is kind of strange. Top chat, there we go, over to the side. No chats, yeah, there it is, all right, regardless. Now that we got that straight, you can fast forward ahead past all that stuff. Again, leaving the guns till later. Just wanna get everything knocked out. Pretty simple process, rinse and repeat until you're done. So, anybody see Solo out there? If you did, let me know in the comments what you thought. We've had a little bit of time to measure on it, lost a good bit of money as a big DC Comics fan. I uh, feel a little vindicated when I saw all the articles of like, this movie beats the Justice League box office, this movie beats the Justice League box office, and then strangely there's no article about that on server. So just have to feel a little bit vindicated because love me some DC Comics and hate the hatred of the DC Universe. But, uh, you know, hey, that's, uh, that's kind of how it goes sometimes. But uh, Solo, shockingly, spoilers here. Well, not really, I'm not going to spoil it. 
it ended up being a much better movie than I thought because I hated The Last Jedi. And here's the thing. I hate internet group think. I hate the whole idea of, well, we got to think like everybody else. What am I supposed to think about this based on what the internet says? I hate that kind of stuff. But what I noticed was in the theater, I started noticing a bunch of things I just hated about Last Jedi. And then I got online afterwards and found out, oh, you weren't the only one that hated that aspect of The Last Jedi. You weren't the only one that, oh, totally, when they said, hey, you've got to go to this casino and do this thing in the middle of this escape, who went, are you serious? Like, how is that even make remote sense for them all for them to just sneak off this thing and get over there and do this casino heist deal and then that ended up being totally fruitless but we saved some space horses so yeah yeah space horses boy that was that was not fun so i remember watching it in theater thinking man i hate so many aspects of this movie but then again the throne room fight scene ended up being amazing until they uh until they cut that until they cut that lightsaber part out um when it's pretty awesome you can watch the thing slow down when ray is fighting one of the guys she's fighting has two blades and uh, when she gets up on him he would have a killing stroke but all of a sudden that blade is not in his hand anymore when the camera it's all one shot but when he moves his hand back around from her the blade is gone so either he sunk it into her back and killed her and she just healed really fast or they were like crud we've got to make this look a little better so it's pretty funny but the throne room fight scene was pretty great. I really enjoyed that. Let's see. Keep rocking and rolling on these as we do. Uh, you know what? Like, sadly, it doesn't get a whole lot better than this. So if you want to just kind of dip in and out, that's fine. But just know this is what we're going to be doing for a while. Is we're going to be getting the paint on all these guys' hands, their faces, their eyes. And then we're going to do the wash. And that's the part I really want you to see. If you haven't done this before, I want you to do the wash with me or see the wash so you can see. Holy cow, it looks like magic when that happens. A <sighs> piece of plastic there. So like I say, back here on the thigh, the buttocks, whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, get that part, you know, put a little shadow there to where you can see it. The whole idea is that where these look okay, even if you weren't going to wash them, but they look amazing when we do the wash. And that's kind of the whole goal is to make them look magical. I realized for the first time that I could do this and paint when I put the wash on the Stormtroopers from Imperial Assault. Like I thought, there's no stinking way I could ever do this. And all of a sudden, there you go. Boom, you have an amazing looking figure just as soon as you get washed. Now obviously you have to highlight up and things like that. You learn colors, how to blend and wet blend and do all the colors and such as that. But when it comes to a black and white figure like the Stormtrooper, it's actually pretty amazing if you've never done this before, to watch it happen for the first time in front of your eyes. Pretty cool process. And that's kind of what we're doing right now. So, not to drone on in a total monotone sort of way, but uh, yeah, we're just rock and rolling. So I uh, also have been playing some, some Super NES Classic, and I realized that it wasn't that hard to do the little hack cheat thing where you, you download... Um, the, the ROMs that I own, legally by the way, because these are all the games that I own, um, they're easy to just throw right onto your SNES Classic. So I've been playing some Mega Man X2 until the uh, Mega Man X collection comes on a Switch. Fantastic game, if you, uh, if you ever got into that. But uh, some of you might be older, some of you might be younger and be like, bro, that was not my, was not my console. Hashtag, not my console. Is that a thing? Can we make, can we make that a thing? Uh, anyway, <laughs> so I've been doing that, just kind of playing around, hanging around with that. Max, man, I've been toying with the idea of getting into painting miniatures as a meditative experience. Max, normally it's really meditative, but because I decided to do this live stream for some weird, strange reason other than just to test it out, it's become slightly, uh, slightly less than meditative because I feel like I'm just uh, <laughs> I'm feeling dead air. But uh, yeah, no, it is good when you just chill, put on some music, or if you have a show, that you're not even watching that close, like one you can just kind of listen to. Or, heck, I used to watch all the shut up and sit down reviews, you know, board game reviews when I was really getting into the hobby. And just have it in the background, listen, and just paint anything you don't have to look up at, because then it's kind of it's kind of bad to have to constantly look up and say, wait a minute, did Timothy Oliphant just shoot Boyd Crowder? You know, right? What just happened there? Deep cuts, great TV show there. Sorry. Let's see. Like I said, if it gets a little smudgy up there, the beautiful part is you can just fix it later with the white 
uh, the white scar that we're going to use, and that's what this is for, is it's for your highlighting back up out of the black, uh, black wash. And so we'll see that in a little bit. Shockingly, this is going to go pretty fast. I mean, it's 14. It, I've done the math because I've painted, I think, eight or so core figure uh, core sets now. It's um, it's 14 stormtroopers. It's 14 rebel troopers, and it's also um, 14. No, it's 14 of those each. But it's also the ATRT, Darth Vader, and Luke Skywalker, and uh, the two speeder bikes. So it's actually way less than it sounds at first. So when you buy a core set, it seems kind of daunting when you open up the box and go, oh, I'll never be able to paint all this. So you realize that the core set's not a whole lot to field an entire army on the table. So you need more, which means you're going to have to buy more, which means you're going to have to be getting more and more figures to paint. Which reminds me, I've got the, uh, the Batman game kickstarted, and after total count, there's so many stinking figures in that that there's no way I'm going to be able to paint that anytime soon. So... Uh, yeah, that's going to be fun to paint that. I'm really looking forward to painting, you know, Batman and uh, Green Arrow, I think, made it in there. And then one of the stretch goals. But, uh, man, it's going to be kind of a chore when you're doing, like, spoiler or uh, some of those characters that I just don't know a whole lot about. You know, and I'm like, man, I just want to paint it all there. Of course, I might just sell some of the pieces that I don't want for people who were like, dude, didn't kickstart the whole thing. That's kind of my grand scheme. Sell off the pieces they don't want. It's nice on these because they have their visor too tight towards their gun, and so you can get away with not having to be 100% as accurate in there. Now, Sir Astro's video on the Stormtroopers from Imperial Assault, they really go through and show you how to paint the style I'm painting right now. His video on Legion is actually a totally different experience. He goes through and he just primes everything, and then he just paints thin lines around the edges, which makes it where it's... Uh, it's tabletop ready, but it's not quite as detailed because none of the none of the small the small little details in between on the white panels get colored in, like you'll see them get colored in in a minute. Uh, like I said, we're gonna go back and do the guns here in just a second once I knock out the rest of these visors and hands and such small details like cracks and crevices in their armor, where I guess they have some sort of black bodysuit. Have we not got that yet? Have we not got like the breakdown in a movie of someone just throwing on their, their gear really fast? I think the closest we got was like when Finn took off his helmet in episode seven, which is arguably a pretty good movie, actually. I like seven. Don't quite care for what they did with uh, Solo, uh, with Han Solo in seven, but uh, you know, he just kind of became a kind of a kind of a beat up, a, a bum dad, you know, riding around in his Corvette. Living life. Kind of like, he basically became Johnny in Cobra Kai, which was an amazing show, by the way. If you haven't watched Cobra Kai, if you like the 80s, if you're nostalgic or somewhat, it's amazing. But it's not just an amazing show just for nostalgia factors. It's like they were like, hey, you know what? People like nostalgia, but let's give them a great show. But not only that, let's give them a great show on YouTube Red. I'm sorry. If you like YouTube Red, and I do for the no commercials and all that stuff, I've never once thought of YouTube Red as like premium entertainment. Like that's where I go for my Breaking Bad style shows. But I'm telling you, Cobra Kai was great. Why am I talking about that right now? They're not paying me to advertise them. I enjoyed it that much. It was that good of a show where uh, just good acting, good casting. And like I said, you do not think that when you think of a YouTube show. Uh, a lot of funny product placement because you go, well, clearly that, that brand has paid some money for this show. Because they're literally in every every episode more than once. And you'll know what I'm talking about as soon as you see it. It's pretty funny. But um, good show. Check that out if you haven't watched it yet. All right, we got two more visors and hands to do. Then we're going to go back and hit the big details of the guns. And the good news is why I'm saving that for last is actually easier. Is you can just slap some color on there, smear it all over the place, and you'll be good to go. I can't tell if my head's in the way it's not. Okay. I know the camera's not incredibly zoomed in. But when we get past some of these details, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let me get in. Let me get an eye here. So you're, you're looking at something like this where you just get in relatively close here. You can see the details there of what we're going for. And then when we get the wash on, I'll show you even closer. I'll show you a before and after because the way this works is it's 14 figures, but it's seven of the same sculpt uh, repeated. So I'm sorry, it's it's seven different sculpts repeated twice. So you get seven different sculpts of stormtroopers, two versions of each, which comes up to 14, obviously. Same thing for the rebel troopers. You get seven different ones twice. 
So it's a good amount of figures, uh, much more so than Imperial Assault. Um, now here's the deal though, I haven't played it. So I couldn't tell you if there's any difference between these two Stormtroopers, even though uh, they look the same. They have two different types of guns, obviously. I think there's some sort of um, cards that can change up, you know, what a Stormtrooper does when they have certain amount of um, certain types of weapons or whatever. And I think this dude with his arm out and the shoulder plate is actually the commander. And I'll show you, we're going to paint that shoulder plate too. All right, so, yeah, that's it for that stuff. So now let's go back. Take a little bit bigger of a brush this time. I might even take the one that I put them on. This is actually a pretty large brush, but it does a good job because it, uh, it gets enough paint on the brush to just kind of get in these places. The good thing is because the hands are, the, the fingertips are black, it doesn't matter when you're doing the guns if you go over the fingertips with these because this is the same exact color that we painted the fingertips, which again is why I talk about why these stormtroopers are so easy to paint is because much of them is just these two co these two colors is monochromatic. I guess technically that would not monochromatic, but in a in a technical sense it is. It's two colors, black and white. So we're just going to go on here, paint these on, get these rocking and rolling, and then you can go through and watch this later. Again, I'm not expecting anyone to sit here and watch this for. The entire time it takes me, I have to paint them anyway. And I figured this would be a good resource. People can fast forward through, pause on, all sort of things like that um, to see, you know, what I'm doing just to get their, get their feet wet and the idea of painting these miniatures. So if there's any breaks where I just stop talking, just know it's because I assume that you're not going to watch every single moment of this. But I'll try to keep it fresh if you're here. Same thing here. We're going to get the book pack, the book pack, the backpack here and the gun on his hip, make sure you hit those. Don't forget those little things because they will stand out. But um, I just do these backpacks in black as well. And then you can add some, uh, some edge highlights later and we'll go through that with some, you know, iron breaker, which is kind of a lighter or darker, uh, darker silver or a lighter metallic, I should say. Um, so we'll go through that in a minute. It's okay if you get it on the shoulders here again, we're gonna go over this all with white later. So don't worry if you have a little bit of overspray there. All right. So we got him taken care of. Just kind of give it a circle. Make sure you got everything on there, all the details of, you know, black or, or covered in that need to be covered in. If you need to add some more water to your paint, if it's starting to stick up, like I told you, if you um, didn't water down your paint. And for those who don't know what I mean when I say water down your paint, you take a couple brushfuls of water and you just put it in your paint right there and it just wets it and keeps it flowing good. Because if it doesn't, it'll kind of glob together too thick. And that is what happens when your paint gets too thick you know, or too dry is it just starts to glob together and be thick and hard to use. And that's when mistakes happen a little bit more. Cool thing is too, uh, if your paint is a little bit wetter, it gives more of an, a highlighted feel anyway because it, it settles more in the creases and leaves some of the edges a little bit lighter. So you get almost a natural edge highlight. Um, which I don't know if you can get away with it with a whole lot of colors, but with this black on these guns, you definitely can because it's, I mean, if you think about it, if you look at the edge of something, it's, it's got a shine to it anyway. So these edge highlights, that's what those are for. They just, they take that natural edge that is reflecting right back at your eye when you're looking at something straight on um, and you paint it on. Because there will be natural edge highlights, but because you wanna force them to fake them to be there from all angles, you have to paint them where you want them to be. So with a lightsaber, you pick an angle that you like and you would just put that direction towards the camera or towards your eye, sorry, uh, and paint it down it. So when we paint Luke's lightsaber, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pick an angle that we like and we're gonna make it just lighter and lighter and lighter and thinner little strips to make it look like that is that, that light core that's reflecting out of there. Now again, you can't do that in a 360 degree direction because it's paint. It's not translucent, it's solid plastic, so you have to fake it. And that's kind of what the edge highlighting does. It fakes that, um, that look of the light for a, you know, a 3D image, which is basically what these are, they're 3D paintings. So you're capturing one moment in uh, perpetuity. Is that the right word? I don't know. 
So I'm going to paint these down here. And as soon as I get one washed and one highlighted, I'm going to call it quits on the stream. But uh, that will be the idea. So again, if you're, if you're watching this later, the whole point of this is just so that you have these steps taken down back to back to back to back. So you can actually see how long it will take you to quickly paint these uh, stormtroopers and uh, how to fix any mistakes, how to make little things pop that you don't even notice sometimes, how to really make your stormtroopers look really good on the table versus just, you know, not really taking the time or paying someone a whole lot of money to do it, you know, uh, which is nice. It's nice if you can do that. It's nice if you can charge and paint them for people. Trust me, I have experience with that. It's very, very nice to um, pay for your hobby like that, in fact. But uh, that's not that's not what I'm doing right now. I'm actually showing you how to do that because someone was nice enough to show me on a free video. And that's what I'm here for. If you want to know more about us and what we do in our channel, you can support us at patreon.com backslash the latest retro. You can see more videos like this. Now, we do reviews. All of our board game reviews are on the Dice Tower, and I have an agreement with Tom where that's all of our board game reviews. They go over there. I mean, the Dice Tower is such a great organization anyway. I wouldn't really want to put my reviews on my own channel simply for the fact that the viewership, I mean, I'm not even going to lie. That's the main reason. Uh, besides the fact they're a great organization is the fact that the viewership on the Dice Tower is huge. I mean, they have hundreds of thousands of subscribers, so people see the videos over there. So if you if you want to know what all kinds of board game reviews I do, go over to the dicetower.com or you can check on my uh, the channel that you're watching this on and there's a playlist called um, uh, My Videos on the Dice Tower. I think we have 108 or so on there right now. Just different stuff, you know, from different genres. I just did one. I like to do versus videos where I take two types of board games that are similar and pit them against each other. We just did Sagrada and Azul. Put those two together, very popular little tile placement games. Uh, we did some stuff on Imperial Assault recently on the app, which, my gosh, if you haven't played Imperial Assault with the app, you need to do that. It's just fantastic. Um, also, <clears throat> some, some of that stuff's on there as well. So you can see all the different types of video that we do. I don't just play, you know, in fact, I don't even play Star Wars Legion uh, yet. I would love to. I'd love to get into some games of it, but it's just one of those things that's so much of a buy-in. But it seems to be worth it. It seems to be really popular. It seems to be doing good. Um, you know, kind of like when Star Wars Destiny came out, Destiny's got such a easier buy-in. You're not you're not investing in a whole full-scale um, hobby, hobby or what do you, what do you call that? Uh, I think it's a hobby game. You know, where you're actually paying for the for the figures, and but then from there you're not just paying for the figures. You're oh, by the way, if you ever get something paint where it doesn't belong, wet your brush. Wipe that spot down, and it will pull it out of there. Even if it's black on white, you can still remove almost all of it just by being diligent and quick. you got to be quick with that. All right, finish knocking these out. These will be all the guns here. And we'll be good to go. I know I've said that a million times. So, let's see. And just to clarify again, the the live view numbers and the views while it's live is not an indictment of people watching or anything like that. I, I truly did not expect there to be any viewership at all, um, but it's more of a test for when we do decide to do more things like that. Um, and plus, I had to paint these. This is for someone else's set. It's not for me. So had to be done. Why not do it while talking? Tell everybody what she is. So we just asked me who Kira becomes from Solo. It's an excellent question, but apparently you need to watch Rebels for all that kind of information. I don't know that she goes on any further, but uh, a lot of Rebels tie-ins, old Solo. Definitely not a spoiler. Not a spoiler at all, unless you know the direct tie-ins, and then you're going to go, eh, it's kind of a spoiler. But then if you know already, then it's not a spoiler. So it's getting a little inception on in our spoiler calling right there, aren't we? But uh, yeah, it's good. Good. I enjoyed Solo much more than I thought I was going to. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I went in fully expecting to hate the movie, and uh, I liked it. I liked it as good as um, Rogue One, if not better. Because I'm first. To be fair, the first 40 minutes of Rogue One were incredibly boring, and none of the characters except for uh, K2SO were memorable. I mean, they really just weren't. So you know, I'm not. I'm not a huge, huge, huge fan of Rogue One in the first place. So we just finished up hitting all the spots of black uh, on these guys. What we're going to do is. 
but we're gonna do all the white, the black washing now, but we need to give it just a minute to dry. So I'm gonna drink some water. With a hint of blackberry. And we're gonna go to town. Best to find ones that are totally dry. I know I did this guy at the beginning. Try to find some ones that are much drier than the other ones and do those first because if the paint is wet, when that uh, wash gets on there, it's just gonna pull some of that paint off. So we actually need to hold off. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Um, so I can go ahead and end this part so you can see it and get the idea of what you're gonna be doing in the future. Let me do one I know is dry. Do it completely, do it really well where you can see it. And then I see, hold on. I forgot to do his sidearm. He's got the uh, rifle on his sidearm. Also do have to do another plug. So a buddy of mine, or an acquaintance, I should say. We're not, we're not really close, but a, a friend, uh, an acquaintance of mine named Curtis started a company that you've probably heard of now called The Void. The Void is this amazing experience. It's a 3D, uh, 3D virtual reality, augmented reality experience that now has a branch at Disney World where you can go in and be part of the rebellion. You walk in and you look at your hands with this Oculus Rift type thing that they have on their screen on your head and you can see your hands are now stormtrooper hands. You walk in and you pick up what looks like, if you took your visor off, just this hunk of plastic. It's in the shape of a gun. But when you look at your hands uh, while holding it, you're holding you know, an E-11 rifle. So it's the most amazing experience. If you get to go down to Disney, go to downtown Disney, or excuse me, Disney Springs, and check out the void. It is incredible. It's right by, <clears throat> it's towards the, gosh, I guess north end of Disney Springs. I think it's by the big Disney store down there, the world of Disney store. You won't want to miss it. So the Nuln oil, shake it a good bit. Get a good, good, good shake on that. You can pour some out like this. You're going to take a brush that uh, will soak up a little bit. Because when I do, my, I do my washes, I do them kind of thick. Because I like the stormtroopers to get in all the crevices and stuff like that. And I'll just show you what happens right here. So you take it. I'll start with the face. If you can see it on the face. Notice that? It just pops. He goes from being just a hunk of plastic to having that stormtrooper face to him. Let's see if we can see it really even closer up here. And just gets in all those crevices. You just paint down. Basically, you're going to take and thinly paint down this wash over the entire figure to where it fills in every crack, crannies, and whatever. You know what I'm saying. No need to alliterate that. So we're going to get it all in here to where I'll show you two of them side by side. Now it's gonna be darker, which is why we have the white scar. We're gonna highlight back up out of this dark stuff. But the whole point is all these spots will now be filled with color, this black and white look. And it's gonna look like we took the time to meticulously sit there and paint every single detail of these figures, but we did not. We slyly used a wash to get in all these crevices. Now there are other brands, I've never used them just because I've always used Nuln Oil. It is a fantastic thing, it'd be N-U-N-L, N-U-L-N Oil is what it's called. It's a, it's a Warhammer product, a Citadel product. So you see these two, let me get the other one that's the exact same sculpt. And it's hard to see maybe with the light, but now look at these two figures. You have one that looks like a stormtrooper and one that looks like just a hunk of white plastic. And that's all because of that Nuln oil, just getting in there and getting all those crevices painted. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna take the white paint in a little bit and we're just gonna highlight him up. So any of these spots that are really dark, you're just gonna highlight up. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll come back on a little bit and show you that so you'll have the second video. But um, you have to let these dry for a little bit. So other than just sitting here watching me do this, what we'll do is I'll come back on with the live video and show you this guy in a little while.